Okay, and welcome everybody. Uh, so nice to have you all again here. I see it's a nice crowd already. So today we're going to do gel printing with um, masking tape. And I have to say that that is one of my favorite things to do at the moment. Um, I haven't been doing it for a long time, but it's a really fun way of creating um, collage material. And of course I'm going to use my, uh, my gel plate and um, I think we just should uh, get started and focus on my workspace. So there we go. Um, so today I'm going to uh, use my eight by 10 um, jelly arch gel printing plate. And I'm actually going to work on two plates at the same time because um, I need layers to dry before I can do the print. And um, to make sure that I can continue working, I will work on two plates. And then hopefully at the end of this class, we will have uh, a large variety of um, different um, masking tapes, printed masking tapes. And uh, to give you an idea of what is possible, um, I'm going to show you some, some of my samples, just, just a couple of them. And um, as you can see, they all have a very different uh, patterns and textures and colors. And also the masking tape itself has a different uh, size. So you can have uh, very small masking tape and also a very wide one. So uh, you can do it in whatever size you like. And I think there are even wider uh, masking tapes available than the one that I have. But um, for me, this is um, mostly collage material and this is big enough to, uh, to use as um, collage material and to die cut from or cut shapes from or whatever you want to use it for. So um, the masking tape that I'm using today is not exactly the same as the one that Michael's is selling, but um, they all work the same. But of course I don't have access to the brands that Michael's is selling. So my brands might be different, but um, the idea is the same and it doesn't really matter which brand you use. And there will be links in the chat to the different masking tapes that Michaels has available. So I have the, uh, three different sizes and um, during the class, I will show all sizes to you. But first I'm going to explain a little bit about um, printing with the masking tape. So the difference with masking tape um, and paper is that I'm actually going to use the adhesive that's uh, on the masking tape to pull up the paint from the plate. So the paint is going to be on the sticky side, which means that you need uh, a diff another adhesive or a gel medium or something like that to actually glue down um, your tape. But that's okay because I did not intend this to be tape. I intend this to be collage material. And if I need a different product to glue it down, then that's fine with me. But the, using the adhesive of the masking tapes makes it really, really easy to pick up the paint from the plate and um, you will never fail. So if you do gel printing on paper and you want to pick up dried paint from your plate. You need a thin layer of wet paint to pull that print. And if you ha don't have the exact right amount of paint, then you might, um, there might be paint staying behind on the plate that you are not able to pull and your prints might not be perfect. But when you pull uh, paint with the adhesive that's on the uh, masking tape, then you will always pull all the paint from the plate. So you will always be successful. Now, the thing is, if you, um, I can only do one pull, right? With my piece of masking tape, I can only pull paint from the plate once and then it will not be sticky anymore because the paint will be on this side. So I cannot pull a second layer. 
which means that I have to build up my layers on the plate instead of on the masking tape, where you might want to build layers on paper in uh, several prints. You cannot do that with the masking tape. You have to build up your layers on the plate and then pull them in one go. That means that you have to think about the order of um, your colors and your textures. So what you always have to keep in mind is that the first layer on the plate will be the top layer on your print. Just imagine having uh, several layers of paper, several sheets of paper. So I lay down one sheet and another sheet and another sheet and another sheet. These are four layers of paint. When I pull my paper up and I turn it around, my first sheet of paper is on top of this stack of paper. That's the same with your paint. So your first layer of paint when you pull the print will be on top of your print. I hope that that makes sense. Um, once you know that, you can uh, think about how am I going to build up my layers and my colors. So you don't want your first layer to be a solid layer because that would mean that that layer would completely cover every layer that you put on the plate afterwards. So you want open spaces in your first layer. Also, when you build up layers on your paper, I always recommend you start with the bright light colors and then um, print the darker colors on top because the darker colors will then cover up parts of the light colors. In this case, um, if I would put a yellow on my plate first and then put a purple on top, then the yellow would be translucent. And when I turn it around, you will still not see the yellow on top of the purple, which means that in this um, way of printing, it might be better to choose the darker and the more solid colors for your first layers. But I think that will all be clear once I start printing. So today I'm, as usual, I will be printing with, um, Winsor & Newton Galleria acrylic and with the list Liquitex basic acrylics. And the links will be in the, in the chat and um, all the colors will be available. All the colors that I'm using will be available on the Michaels website. Besides acrylic paint, I'm going to use um, found and handmade tools to create texture. So I have, for instance, um, some lace, I have uh, bubble wrap, I have some punchinella and different kinds of cardboard from packaging material. I also have some um, pill strips and um, Lego, a little piece of Lego to create dots. And then I have, of course, my um, Jelly Arts mini tools to create texture. And I have some tools that I made by hand. And these were actually two of my classes for Michaels. So um, maybe somebody can find the links to these classes if you're interested in making your own um, texture plates with hot glue. And these are texture plates made with um, craft foam. So these are the textures and also I have here some um, corks with um, um, a cap, a bottle cap glued to it with a hot glue gun. And so I have a little stamp that I can use on my plate. And these are the tools that I'm going to use today. So I'm going to try and um, create as many different textures next to each other on my plate. So you can uh, see all the different possibilities. And I'm going to start with, a, let me see. I'm going to start with a quinacridone magenta. And I hope I pronounced that right because I always struggle with that, with that word but I'm just going to add a little bit of that paint and roll it out. 
to create a thin, even layer of paint. And if there's too much paint on my brayer, I will just spray it off on a sheet of paper. I have some uh, scrap paper on the side, clean up paper where I um, just roll off my excess paint. And then at some point my paper is uh, very pretty too. And I can also use that as collage material. So I'm going to create um, open spaces in this thin layer of paint because I want to create a texture. So for instance, I'm going to use uh, a fill strip and I'm just going to push it down and I can push it back down in an area where there's no paint and it will just transfer the paint from the area where I picked it up to um, the, per the area next to it. And you don't really have to be really quick uh, with this because you want uh, all the layers to dry before um, you can move on to, or you, yeah, you need the whole first layer to dry before you can move on to the second layer. So um, you don't have to be really quick because otherwise you have to wait anyway. I'm going to add a second color. This is the deep turquoise. I'm just going to roll it out next to the paint that is already there. And now I'm also going to create some texture in um, this color. So I want to take away uh, some of the paint. So how about using uh, one of these hot glue textures? And as you can see, I'm lifting up the paint here and I'm putting it back next to that area, creating a fun um, texture. And now I have one area left here where I can add some color and I'm going to use this darker blue, the Prussian blue U. And again, you want a really nice thin layer. Um, first of all, I think the uh, thinner layers look better in the print, but also uh, if you have a really thick layer, it takes a long time to dry. And um, I don't know about you, but um, I uh, am not a very patient person. So I want my paint to dry quickly. So I'm just going to use my lace here, uh, which will create a beautiful texture. And I need a sheet of paper to uh, kind of push it down so it will pick up paint. But there might also be some paint going through the open areas and I don't want my hands to be like all dirty right away. So I'm using this sheet of paper. As you can see, some of the paint came through. And look at that texture. Isn't that pretty? So now I'm going, I'm sorry. It's so pretty. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I love that uh, lace, lace texture that you can create on the plate. So um, this is now still a bit wet. And um, before I can add my second layer, this needs to dry. So I'm going to put this aside and I'm going to continue on my second plate. And by the time I have my first layer ready on the second plate, this will be dry and we can move on to the next layer. So my second plate actually is a dirty one. As you can see, um, there's quite some leftover paint on the plate. And I like that. I really like it. I like to work with the dirty plate because this will um, add extra texture and extra uh, interest to my uh, to my prints. I uh, am not like a really big fan of very clean 
prints. I like them to be a bit distressed and uh, a bit random. And so I like it when there is some paint, paint left on the plate and it will pick up um, and that's fine. But if you don't like it, you can clean your plate with, for instance, baby oil and, um, and a wet cloth, or you can use a baby wipe, or you could even use tape to clean your plate. Uh, and then not, uh, not only the masking tape that we're using today, but you can also use like a clear tape to pick up dried paint from the plate. If you want to clean your plate, as you can see, my tape is picking up, picking up the paint. So if you do that a couple of times with a, a piece of clear tape, then you also have really nice packaging tape that you can use for all kinds of mixed media projects. But if you're like me and you like the, the extras, then you can just leave your dry paint on um, when you start a new project. Um, let me see, I'm going to put down, uh, how about a green, a deep, a green and deep permanent. So I'm not a really green person. Um, well, actually I'm quite a green person, but not, not a big fan of green paint. Um, I hardly ever used it, as you can see, it's really, really clean but I'm going to use it today. And who knows, I might be surprised with the outcome. So I'm going to do the same. I'm just going to roll out this paint and I'm going to create some texture with, how about my mini printing tools? my jelly arts printing tools. I'm just going to create like a wavy texture, the kind of texture that's all, uh, also left on the plate. It's actually quite fun because this uh, really creates open, open areas where you can see a new color popping through when you do the print. And now I'm going to put a, I'm just going to try pink, although it's a light color. I'm just going to try and see um, what it will do. Because, and this is because I really like the combination of pink and green. So when I'm using green, I like to combine it with pink. And to create texture, I'm now going to use my um, cardboard. So this is some packaging material that has like a solid layer on both sides. But when you peel off that layer, as you can see, then this is in between, which gives a really fun texture. And I decided not to peel off everything because um, as I said, I like a little bit of a distressed look. So I leave little bits of that layer on so you get um, this more distressed look. So I'm just going to stamp in there and take away some of that paint. So Birgit, they're asking, <laughs> can you share the exact color names? They're loving yeah. your colors. Of course. So the pink that I just put on there is rose pink from Liquitex and the green was also Liquitex and that was green deep permanent. Um, so, but uh, on the uh, Michael's website, uh, the link goes to um, the brand. So it goes to the Winsor & Newton Galleria and it goes to Liquitex Basic, but you cannot, there are no links to specific colors. So you have to go there and then just find um, the color in this like uh, menu where all the colors are uh, together, if that makes sense, if you know what I mean. Yes. Um, let me see, how about I had, let me see what else I have for the bit, little bit darker colors. 
Mm, actually, I'm going to use this one, the permanent rows. A really nice, really, really nice color. It's somewhere between red and pink. And it's very, I think it's a very rich color. I really like it. And here I'm going to use one of my handmade tools like um, the triangle texture. And I'm just going to push it in there. And, oh, look at that. Lift it up and put it down again. There you go. And then I have room for one more. And I'm going to do another color that is not one of my most used ones, like a uh, purple, brilliant purple. I'm really challenging myself here. <laughs> They're, beautiful. The They're beautiful. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, talking about challenges, um, if you like challenges, there is a challenge going on on the Jelly Arts Instagram page and uh, feed. It started today. So the whole month of March, there is a prompt every day and you can play along and um, challenge yourself using the prompts. And then when you post it on Instagram, you can um, use a hashtag that's, um, I don't know what the hashtag is, but I'm sure uh, Luan of, or Liz can put it in the chat, what the hashtag is. And you can also probably find it on the, um, on the Instagram feed. But if you like challenges, then come and join us. Uh, everybody's invited. And um, have some fun with us. The That's Jelly Arts team uh, is also playing. So you will get every day, you will get um, at least one sample of something a jelly arts artist did with uh, with the prom prompt and then you can um, then you can try yourself okay um, this is the second plate so now this one has to dry and uh, hopefully the other one is dry so I can continue working on that one and it looks dry to me, so I can add layers to this one. So what I did before, what I did in the first layer was a distracting color. So I was actually using my tools to take away color um, <clears throat> from the solid layer that I put on the plate. In this second layer, I'm going to um, add texture. So I'm using, going to use my tools more as a stem, which means I'm going to apply the paint to my tool and then stamp on top of this layer instead of uh, putting the paint directly on the plate. So for instance, this little piece of cardboard, I'm going to roll out um, some paint and I'm also doing that on this um, cleanup paper that I have here on the side. How about, um, this is a cadmium orange U. I'm just going to roll out a little bit of that color. And then apply it to my piece of cardboard. And now I can use my cardboard to stamp with. And I'm just randomly going to stamp uh, on top of my first layer. And now that I have rolled out some paint here, I can also use it kind of like an, an ink pad and just put my uh, tool in there to pick up the paint from uh, my paper. Um, because I can, yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. Um, do you mind if I just switch the spotlight to the front facing and then back? It seems like some people are having some issues. So let me try that. See if that helps. Okay. Okay. Just one second. Let me switch to the okay. front. 
and then back to your hands and hopefully that will help. Okay. Is this better? I hope this is better. Um, because I have my sound on the uh, on my on my phone, so it should be uh, if you have it on speaker mode or speaker view, then uh, you should actually see my hands. Um, let's add another color. How about a yellow? Because yellow is always a good color. At least for me, it's always a good color because it's a sunny, bright, happy color. And as I always say uh, here in the Netherlands, the weather is so bad, we have to make our own sunshine. And that's why I use so many bright colors in my, in my work. Oh, that's such a good thing. Somebody <laughs> is asking about acrylic paint, Birgit. And yeah. they're saying, does it have to be acrylic paint? Um, so for this specific technique, um, I would recommend acrylic paint because it really um, pulls up from the plate with the masking tape really well. And um, uh, yeah, I would, I would use usually use acrylic paint for this technique with the masking tape, but you don't have to use only acrylic paint on the plate. So it depends on whatever technique you want to do, but you can basically uh, use anything on the plate from acrylic paint to um, alcohol ink, to pen pastel, to um, crayons, oil, oil pastels. Um, mm -hmm. Crazy, crazy things. You can try almost everything on your plate. And so it depends a lot on your, uh, on your own preference and the kind of prints you want to create because every technique and every product will give you a different, uh, different prints with a different feel. So it all depends on what you like. So Birgit, you're gonna laugh. Somebody just said, um, I think I'm in the wrong class. It ha was supposed to do, was supposed to be about masking tape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, we so haven't the, seen masking tape. <laughs> yeah, so the tape is waiting. Uh, it is waiting. It's the last, um, it's the last step. We first have to build up the layers on the, on the gel place before we can, we can pull them. So <laughs> it is about masking tape, but uh, yeah. Uh, that person, if she is she or he is still here, has to be a little bit patient. We will get there. We will get there. <laughs> uh, I'm also going to use some bubble wrap to add color and just stamp it here and release some of that paint to the plate. How about? Um, I can do some, I was going to say I can do some gold, but I'm going to wait a little bit with the gold. I'm first going mm -hmm. to do a little bit of rose pink again, because I have not used it on this plate yet. And let now me that see. you told us gold, you have to use gold because we love I will. Gold. Okay. I will use gold, but um, in the next step. Okay. I'm going to apply the paint to my pill strip. And then um, print with that, stamp with that. Okay. So I'm not going to add too much uh, more texture to this side of the plate because I really like that, um, the texture and I don't want to take away too much from it, but I'm going to add a little bit of color. And you might think now that um, I'm losing my pattern, but that's what I try to explain in the beginning. When you do the print, everything gets turned upside down and this uh, texture will be on top of the pink but that will you will see that when we um, when we pull the print um, 
let me see. I still want to add some more texture to this layer somewhere here. I'm going to, again, use some of that green. I might start to love it. And also using my hot glue, little texture here. And it will be a ran very random texture. You will probably not really like recognize it as a leaf shape um, in the actual print, but it doesn't matter because it's all adding texture and uh, color to the final um, to the final tape. So now I'm going to put this aside again and doing the same on the second plate. And I actually might already add some gold here, but I'm not going to use gold paint, but I'm going to use gold leaf uh, or gold flakes. So that's like a really thin, uh, very thin layer of gold. And I'm just going to put that in random areas on the plate. And as you can see, it sticks really sticks in the open areas on the plate. Um, just adding a little bit here and there, especially here in these open areas because I really want it to show. And uh, it would also show if I put it in um, an area that has some more paint, you will still see that there is something uh, underneath the paint, but it like the shine will only really show in uh, in open areas. So I'm just going to leave that there and I can just uh, apply paint on top. So that's a fun extra thing that you can do. And how about I also, let me see, I have some gold paint here. I also have some gold paint. I could also add some gold paint, a little bit of gold paint here. Just going to add a little bit. So this is really um, just about playing around a little bit and just kind of see what comes out of it. And I'm, I know now already that some areas, some of the tapes that I will pull will be really pretty, but there will also be some tapes. Always there are also some tapes that are not so pretty, or maybe you like the ones that I don't like and the other way around, because of course, this is all a matter of taste. I think that the bright aqua green is a really nice uh, combination for the purple a bit extreme but I think I like it. Uh, so Birgit somebody asked could you also use gold foil versus your gold flakes but isn't that gold foil? I don't know. Uh, so you have gold leaf and gold flakes that's what I'm using so the gold okay. leaf can also be used. Gold foil is different because foil is on top of uh, a plastic layer and you it has to be released from the plastic layer. And it's actually, uh, if you would use it on the plate, it would be the wrong side. So the gold would oh. be on the inside instead of on the outside because um, it you're releasing it from the plastic and the, to the bottom of it is not really gold. It's only the top that is gold. So that would not work. Okay. Um, and also you need something like sticky to release it from, like really sticky to release it from the, from the uh, backing or how, do, how would you call it? Back film, back plastic. Uh, so you would need something like a strong glue or um, an embossing powder, that kind of stuff. So that would not work, but a gold leaf, which you can get in sheets and the gold flakes that you get in like little uh, containers. That's what, uh, what I'm using here. 
Okay. Um, let's again add some color. How about I'm going to try something and I have no idea if this go is going to work, but I'm going to add a solid layer on top of that purple. And then again, use the um, mini tool to create a texture in that. And uh, what did I not, what haven't I used yet? Okay, so oh, I also you know the color of the yellow. Oh, I'm sorry, didn't I mention it? It was uh, the primary, I used the primary yellow. Great, thanks. But actually, I like this one even better, which is the get cadmium get me, um, get me, um, yellow deep U. It's <laughs> really warm. It's a really warm yellow. So I like this even better, but that's all a matter of preference, right? Mm. So I'm going to add also a solid layer to this area and then also again, remove some paint from it before I add the top layer. And what would be nice on top of that green, um, maybe a yellow, why not? Let's do, let's use that. Gold. <laughs> or gold. I already have gold here. I know. I'm going I like to use it. I'm going to use the yellow here. And actually, I don't think that this is the best color to use um, to create texture in, but I'm going to try it anyway. And I'm going to use this like a cotton. I think it's called the cotton tip, right? And a I'm swab. just cotton swab. swab. Cotton cotton swab. No, that's not something that you will really uh, see because the color is too light. Although you can see that I took away um, some paint with it, but uh, maybe I should do that in a darker color. So how about I'm, mm, I don't really have room for that here. Or maybe, maybe down here, I can do a little bit of the, um, what was it? bright aqua green I'm just going to roll it out down here and then i'm going to create um, a texture i think this shows a little bit better with the cotton swap very random and uh, something, I need something here because this is not, it's still a bit boring. In my, that's my personal opinion, of course. But I think I need some um, magenta there. The, the difficult magenta. So the quinacridone magenta. I think it needs a nickname. Maybe call it yeah. Q QC or something. Yeah, something like that. QC magenta. Right. That's that's how we will call it from now on. Yeah, I like that. A little bit of extra flavor on top. And I'm also going to add some here. And why not here? Somebody, somebody's also asking how you're loading the paint on your brayer because it's not on the screen. We can't see that. So maybe oh, yeah. I just, I just have my um, cleanup paper here, and I will just add a little bit of the color. Let me see which color am I going to use up here. Uh, how about a brilliant yellow green? And I'm just going to put a little bit of that paint on my cleanup paper. And I'm going to make sure that my brayer is clean. And then I just roll it out like this, make sure that I have my paint all around. And then I can just add it to whatever I want to use. 
like this. And now I can stamp it. And so this paper, the, the cleanup paper that I have here, I use it uh, several times. Um, so when this is like completely uh, wet with paint and I just put it aside for uh, another printing session and I might do that three or four times. And then usually it's um, like, it's filled with beautiful colors and textures and patterns. And uh, because I also can use it to clean up my, uh, my stamps or whatever tools I'm working with. And then usually it has um, a lot on there that you can use again as a collage material or background to stamp on or even a background in your art journal or whatever you like to do with it. Like for instance, this one already is quite pretty, I think. And so I have a big box filled with all, like this one also. I use this many, many times to just um, rub my paper on the plate. So I have all these like edges because my paper on the plate was smaller and then you get all these different colors. So I can totally imagine cutting out pieces from this and then use it as collage material. So no paper, hardly any paper gets wasted here. Okay, I'm going back to uh, the other plate and then put the final layer on. And um, so this can dry for a couple of minutes. So this should all be dry. It feels dry. Now I'm going to cover uh, the entire plate with a solid layer of paint. And um, why am I doing that? Well, first of all, I can add uh, yet another color or even more than one color. But um, secondly, when I pull the paint from the plate like this, then there will be open areas because there are areas here where there's no paint yet and that will remain sticky. And when that is sticky, it's really hard to like store your tape um, as collage material. So you need to have paint everywhere. You don't want open sticky spaces. So before pulling this, I'm going to add the layer. Now, if I don't want to change or add any of the color on the plate, I'm just going to use a plain white, like a titanium white. <clears throat> and I'm just going to roll that out, covering everything like this. But if I want to add another color, then I could also choose, um, for instance, that brilliant yellow green. I would not use a really dark color in this stage because. Um, even if you use um, opaque colors on the plate, then still, because you're working with these very uh, light, very thin layers, um, all of the paints will be kind of translucent. So if you use a really dark color here, like a really dark purple or a dark blue for this layer, then you will totally lose all the bright colors that are on your plate. So I would always go for the, for the bright and light colors in this stage. I'm going to put some yellow there and I can also go for, I don't have to roll it always like this. I can also go like that or even totally random add a variety of colors on the plate and go up and down and from left to right like crazy, which can also get give you really nice results, but I'm not going to go too crazy today. Although maybe for some of you, this might be crazy enough already. <laughs> maybe. Somebody did ask, how many layers do you think make a good number of layers for a good tape? Well, I would normally go uh, about three layers, but you can 
keep you can keep building up as many layers as you like and it depends on how crazy and how busy and how many colors and textures and patterns uh, you want to be in there but um, if you are more um, uh, like a clean type of artist and you make like really clean artwork and you want only to do one layer with a color uh, on top then of course you can do that too you can make it as as busy or as simple as you like mm -hmm. so now this has to dry you have to make sure again uh, you have to make sure that all of the paint is dry before you pull it with the tape because paint that is not completely dry will not really pull from the plate because um, the wet paint just doesn't stick to the adhesive of the uh, of the masking tape. So you have to make sure that all of the paint is dry. Now I'm also going to add that um, top layer on um, this plate. And I'm going to do some of that green over okay. here. I just feel like I need to warn you because I can't wait to see the masking tape, but it's already 347. So Ooh. we well, want to see I'm, the beautiful tape. Yeah, of course. So we have like 15 minutes left. Yes, maybe 13. <laughs> oh, is it like shutting off at? Uh, I don't know. I guess we can ask him to stay a few more minutes, but. I don't know how it works. It's not like it's, I don't think it's like automatically shutting off after an hour, is it? All right. Well, yeah, if you go a couple of minutes, it's fine. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, because actually this is almost this is the last layer. And as soon as this is dry, I can pull um I can pull the tape and then actually uh it should be about an hour uh when I'm ready. So oh as you can see, I put my thumb down here and um, I pulled up the paint, which means that the paint there is not dry yet. Um, which means we have to wait a little bit. I'm going to try and speed it up a little bit. It's, it's almost dry, but I, we have to wait a tiny little bit. So maybe uh, we can take a, a minute or two, three, something like that to answer a couple of questions and then I can pull the tape. Are okay. there any questions right now? Well, somebody just asked, uh, can we use a blow dryer on the plate? And I just wanna make the point that the plates are um, made of plastic and you do not wanna put any heat source near the plate. So we don't recommend putting a heat gun for sure on the plate. No, no, no. I, I, I don't think that uh, like cold air could do any harm, but right. Um, right. you have to make sure that it's cold. It should yes. not be warm. Yes. But I think most hair dryers have actually have a cold setting, but you have to be careful that you actually put it on cold setting and it might help speed up a little bit. And so where I am, like in the Netherlands, it takes a long time for paint to dry, but uh, there are other places in the world where it's much warmer and uh, less humid, where the paint will like dry instantly. And for those people, this is probably a perfect technique, building up these layers. Uh, where other techniques are almost impossible for them to do because the paint is drying so fast. So it also depends on where you are and what the temperature in your room is and stuff like that. And also even um, the brand of, of uh, paint you're using. And if you are using fast drying paint or open paint and it all depends, all these things depend um, or it depends on all these things, how fast your paint will dry. So you really have to find out for yourself how fast it dries and um, mm -hmm. if you actually need something to speed up the drying time. Okay, we have a few more questions. One is, um, have you used Indian ink on the plate? Yeah, I have used it. Uh, it's not my favorite product to use on the plate because um, 
it is not uh, you cannot spread it on the plate it's like uh an indian ink is beating up so it's like, it's like making puddles like water it's making puddles and you cannot spread it so you cannot use it with uh any tools for instance you cannot uh, create a texture in it um okay. but again it depends on what you uh, want to achieve and what um your personal preferences because you can create some like watercolor kind of prints mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um but that's not something that you really need like a gel plate for because it would be the same if you put it on on plastic because it's not spreading and the benefit of a gel plate is that you can spread the product that you put on top of it right because it's like sticky if you put acrylic paint on there or uh, dry products like pen pestle or anything you can you can spread it and that's the benefit of it so okay somebody asked if you could let it dry overnight and then oh yeah you can definitely and if you if you ha don't have time to pull the print um and or you don't want to wait for it you can just put it on your desk and you can come back in even in a, like a week or in a month or <laughs> however long you want to wait and then you're like oh there's still paint on the plate well take some tape and you can pull it off it would be a bit hard to get it off with a baby wipe if you have like several layers on top but if you take tape or even like the clear tape you will always be able to take off uh, to pull off your paint from uh, from the plate so that's no problem that is one of my favorite ways to clean the plate like when they're sitting on the table here for days and days and i don't want to scrub it all off i love yeah. just pulling out the packing tape and using it to clean them yeah and then you end up with a clean plate and some pretty tape and so what else right. what else can you wish for right <laughs> right i'm just going to try and see if I can get some areas uh, pulled off here uh, because today is like a really uh, a day that it's taking a really long time actually to dry I am just going to oh that's interesting somebody asked about painter's tape you know how painter's tape isn't that sticky um yeah but masking tape isn't really very sticky either right uh it's not like uh so you can always take it off even if you have it on paper you can take it off so it's not as sticky as yeah. a, a clear tape or anything but mm -hmm. still it's sticky enough to um to pull up the paint but um yeah painter's but tape what is the what is really the difference between masking tape and painter's tape I think painter's tape isn't as sticky as masking tape. Okay. So somebody well, actually responded and said that they've tried painter's tape and it doesn't work as well. Ah, okay. Well, yeah, that would make sense if it's not that sticky because if the, the tape is not sticky, then the, right. the paint has to be wet to be able to pull it, right? Because you cannot, normally you cannot pull dry product from the plate. You need something sticky or you need a layer of paint, but you cannot pull dry product from the plate. But um, this is yeah. already, as you can see, there are little bits staying behind and I have to wrap a, an extra time to actually pick it up. And that's because it's not like completely dry. So would my paint be completely dry? It would be much easier to actually pull it up which doesn't mean that I can't pull it up like this. It's just a little bit more work because I have to put it back down and rub it extra carefully. But look at this. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Can isn't you hold it? it up closer so we can see a close-up of it? Uh, is it still sharp? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. So you can see all the details of the uh, of the lace. Mm -hmm. And so in the middle part, you see that bit of pink that I put on top. Yeah. And then at the sides, uh, at the left and at the, and at the right is the white paint that I put on top at the end, like the mm -hmm. final the final layer. So um, this should not be sticky anymore because there's paint everywhere, like I said in the beginning. 
Um, but if for some reason it still is a bit sticky because there are maybe tiny little bits where there's no paint, you can just put a thin layer of gel medium on top and then you kind of seal the whole thing and then it's also not sticky anymore. So let's do another, a different area and see how that looks. So people are also asking, how do you use these pieces of tape? Well, for me, it's uh, mostly collage material and um, that's not really something that I could really explain right now because that would be a totally different class and probably not even uh, be able to do that in like one hour. But I did actually a class for Michaels just before Christmas and I made Christmas cards using tape like this. So I um, went a little bit less into the detail of making uh, the tape because I made the ornaments with the tape. But if you're interested to see how I used it, then you can always go back to that specific <laughs> video um, on how to make cards. And it doesn't have to be Christmas cards. It can also be Easter cards, right? Using right. that technique. So mm -hmm. you can have a look at that. But this is this looks totally different, mm -hmm. even though it's Beautiful. coming from the same plate. But don't you like that organic texture mm -hmm. um, that the hot glue texture created? That's good. And, and now I'm going. Oh, and I also need to pull, uh, of course, a piece with the gold, with the gold leaf, because you need to see that. So I'm just going to pull this one and then I'm going to take that other plate to make sure that you get to see the gold leaf before we have to stop. As you can see, it's the paint is drying a little bit more now and it's pulling up much easier. And again, totally different texture, totally different colors. Yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful. So we have some really different patterns and textures all from the same plate. Mm -hmm. Isn't that fun? Yes. And then we have the one. And again, my fingers are taking up some of the paint, but this should be dry enough. I'm just going to try. I'm just going to give it a go and see if I can pull that pretty gold leaf. And usually I don't get like 100% of the gold leaf from the plate. Uh, tiny little bits are usually staying behind, but then again, you can use a different, another piece of tape to remove it or uh, clear tape because clear tape is uh, much stronger than a masking tape. So whatever you cannot get off with masking tape, you can get off with the clear tape. Uh, but the um, gold leaf will also come off with a baby wipe. But I think I will get it up. Again, I'm struggling with getting up the paint because it's not completely dry. But we will get there. So in this matter, because I'm now pulling this tape while the paint is not completely dry, I get these like little open areas here and there where the paint did not completely pull up. Um, but can you see the gold? Yes. Can you put it really close to the sea? Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. So it's like really shiny. Mm -hmm. especially in the in those open open areas mm -hmm. um, but as you can also see maybe here and here that there are these like little uh, bits where the paint didn't pull because it was not dry enough so if I don't want this tape to be sticky anymore because now as you can see it is a bit sticky Mm -hmm. I can just use, um, uh, for instance, a Liquitex 
matte medium and put a, it's a matte medium so it's it's not glossy and you put a thin layer on top and it's like sealing it completely and it will uh -huh. uh, not nice. be sticky anymore uh-huh it's beautiful okay um i think i can do one more pull before i have to stop i want i would want to do this one but this is not dry i'm just going to try one more before i go <laughs> any more questions because i won't have time after i pull this tape to answer any more questions but no we don't have any more we're just okay. watching we just we even love your mistakes don't worry well you know it's good to show mistakes or mistakes it's not like really a mistake it's more like yeah uh not not having enough time but even if it were mistakes it's good to show that um my prints are also not always perfect i might show only the perfect ones on instagram but i have my failures too so don't be too um, disencouraged when you don't get like perfect prints right away. It happens to all of us. So as you can see, this is really not completely dry, but anyway, just to give you an idea. Oh, it's gorgeous. So, even though I could not pull all of the paint, I hope you enjoyed this class and got uh, inspired to, to try out something new. And um, as I said before, you can all join the challenge on the Jelly Arts uh, Instagram feed if you like. And um, I'm not exactly sure when my next uh, Zoom class is, but uh, it oh, will be- it's, it's April 5th. It's April 5th and it will be up on the uh, on the Michael's website probably soon. And mm -hmm. I will announce it on my Instagram closer to the date and Jelly Arts will announce it on their Instagram closer to the date. So keep an eye on that. And uh, thank you for being here today. And I hope I will see you again next time. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. bye.